how you doing? This is V Diamond Rock. What are you up to today? Me today, I am kidding up. This is a very special kidding up because this is the 1000 subscriber giveaway. And yes, I know, I hit the 1000 subscriber um, about one and a half months ago. There's a reason why I haven't done the giveaway until now. And one of them is actually because of this custom. So this custom is from Egypt. This is my own personal picture. It is from Diamond Shop. Um, and the reason why, obviously, if you've been watching my channel and you probably joined my channel because one of the reasons is from Diamond Shop, um, is because this was a custom that I had them made. This was, I had this organized before we did the Jeremiah Morelli release but with that release and the competition and it was like well I did want to do two competitions in one because Diamond Shop with releasing of new artists is so to me is so important because then releasing new artists it actually helps I keep threatening to get booties for both but I haven't done it yet yeah, I probably never will, but I'll still threaten to get in booties. Um, yeah, so it was so important to me that artists actually get released and get recognised and they get credit. And so this competition that was run by, by Diamond Shop was all about the artist and the release of new, new um, how do I put it, new... Well, new, new uh, work available from Diamond Shop. So I put it off until this custom arrived and to make sure there was plenty of room to do the um, Jeremiah Morelli. So I think that's been about a month since, since that was done. Well, over a month now. So it's time to actually get this going. So, 1,000 subscriber giveaway. The choice is one of my four customs that are with Diamond Shop. If you actually go into Diamond Shop and in their search you look at Fiona's cats or, or Fiona or you Google or you go in and look for Egypt, you'll find um, these images through them. One of them that I'm currently working on as well is the leopard. So that's one of the other customs. I do have two other customs um, with them which you will need to work out what they are. If you don't follow my channel, you're going to have to look for it. <laughs> or go into Diamond Shop and have a look, check it out. Um, so, a bit about this image. This is a personal image that I took when I did a trip to Cairo. I got what I classed as a classic Egyptian shot. Um, yeah, I managed, there's still, you can see some people up there. Um, but I think we've managed to get most of them out of this image and so yeah I'm going to kit this up. What I have done is Diamond Shop they give a legend where it's not attached to the, to the image which means when I frame it I can actually wrap it. Um, I don't seal Diamond Shop's rounds. Actually I haven't received, done a square of Diamond Shop but I, ha I don't seal their diamond paintings I've received from them so far because I trust the glue, all of that, the quality is good. I have um, my very first, well I've got, I put, I have framed two Diamonds um, pictures. They are not under glass and they look fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Anyway, getting back to it, they give the loose, le they give the legend loose, right? So what I do with mine is I, What I do with mine is I put it in. I put in like half of the half of the legend into my printer and scale it up to A4, and then I'll turn around and do the same, making sure that I've got the basically it's 15 is where I stop it at. What that gives me is sizing up from a tiny legend like that up to a big legend like this, because I've sized it up so big. One of these is not going to fit through the Xyron, so I have cut it and I'm going to have to be careful. But what it also does is, when I zoomed it up, I actually have the image, and you can see probably my microphone up there, uh, the image and the sizing on it, which goes on the Craftmates Lockable. 
and obviously the Craftmates model is what I'm using to kit up with. This um, is slightly different, this kitting up, because what I'm going to do is there are still only 45 colours, which is standard for Dye Moon Shop. They, they're always just 45 colours. But they have one of their colours. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bags of just the 162. I don't want to actually. I want to be able to bag the whole, unbag um, the whole lot and keep kit it up fully. So the difference in with this one is I'm actually going to go, I'm going to keep a couple for the big ones, so the three big ones, which is uh, the 162, 775, and I'm messing this up. I, well, actually, they're the two that I will definitely be. Um, is it the 610? No. I will do one, the two tray, one, two trays. I'm thinking two trays because these are going to be, this is the sky. If you look at the top of the diamond painting, so there's so much sky up there. These are the two that are right throughout the sky there. So I will basically be using these two for um, that section of the diamond painting. So there's a little bit of difference there and obviously because I have actually had to do this to them, I'm just going to have to make sure I'm very careful with my colours and how I, how I kit it up. So otherwise I've got 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. I'm going to have to be real careful. Okay, that's my first pain is not going to work because I'm short by one. This is where I start working my way through. So how am I going to manage this? Might have to do it the other way. Um, I'm going to kit up from the back. Sorry, these drills are in order apart from where I've messed up here. Um, I'm going to kit up from the back um, and I'll go that way and I'll see how I go with my plan, my devious plan on how I'll get this going. So that is 1 to 15, that's 16 to 30, so I'll be doing 31 to 45 first, but I will label them all up, I will do all the labels, get the labels out of the way. Tell you what, I love. So we all use these as label makers for, well, not all, but some of us, that, those that use it in the diamond painting community. Yet again, crooked. Look at that special little veggie mod I am. Okay, <laughs> creative, a bit salty there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, that just immediately made me think of uh, creative motive. So what you're going to get today is me doing quite a bit of chatting. Um, but uh, crooked again. I'm going to have to reprint. Uh, num those side numbers aren't so important. I'll just be careful with the next one. Okay. Rightio. And I know I've had people tell me, just hold it in the middle. I'm not coordinated. Um, yes, so. <sighs> there we go. And that one. Let's get that through. I lost, completely lost where I was at. Um, I did completely. Yeah, so I'm just going to have to work out how I'm going to get this done. So that's that, that's that. That's the first 30. So I'm going to work from the back. That was what I was doing. I was talking about the label maker. So the label maker, those of us that use it for labelling um, diamond paintings or um, storage containers, which is fantastic. 
I used it, I printed out my own name and used it. I created the label to actually go on my planner, so it's like really cool. Um, Radio, trialing out these scissors. Um, these actually came from Erin Condren, so they're pretty cool scissors and very safety, very safety orientated. So I'm going to keep up from back to front. Oh, do you know how wrong that feels going backwards? So anyway, here we go with the story with where this picture came from. So obviously, I have a bin right there. Don't worry, I do. When I throw stuff that way, there's a bin there. Uh, <laughs> when I went to Egypt, I'll talk a bit about my trip. There was a um, the trip I did was quite an interesting trip. So if you haven't heard the story, you probably might enjoy this story. But if you don't, if you have heard it, listen to it again. Um, you will find that I have a whole, and I'll pop it up, I've got a playlist, I'll pop it up there, a playlist for all my for all my um, for my talk, I did a, a video series while I was diamond painting, whip and chat, where I was talking about. <laughs> I'm just realising I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. It's cutting directly on top of that. Um, okay, so what I did was a video series where I talk, I do whip and chat, and I talk about my holidays. So I did my first one, which was a South African trip, which went down a tree. Uh, and that has actually was the the animals, the, my three cats were photos that I took while I was in South Africa. So I talked through that one. I, and then the next one I did was the Egypt trip, which is where I took this picture. <clears throat> so this was actually on my first full day in Cairo and um, yeah it was a good trip would I go back to would I go back to Egypt again and I have been asked and my answer would be no one at the moment we're not tra we're not able to travel there anyway but my mm, my list. no idea where my lid is I'm going to put that to the side Okay, so there it is. Um, yeah, I wouldn't travel there again because Egypt is one of these places to me where you've seen all the monuments and I struggled with the food. So my desire to go to Egypt again where I struggled with food is not really there. I copped gastro while I was away. <laughs> That's enough to make you not want to go back somewhere. Um, yeah. 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 Gastro is not good when you're on holidays. But how about we go and start with the beginning of how I came about going to Egypt. So I. I. Well, how about I put it? I'll put it another way. I'll start off with you. I, I was a single mum for 12 years. So holidays was not something that I got to enjoy. Holidays, um, definition of a holiday was basically when my boys were with my parents or my ex-husband, which was less time they spent more time with my parents than they did with my ex-husband. So my break my my breaks away from them were basically um, you know school holidays, that was it. And I never really holidayed because it was I was having to work. So I think in the whole time before I met Nathan, I'd been overseas once. So yeah. Um, 
So, but I have discovered I have a bit of a trouble bug because since, so I've done three trips, four trips overseas now, uh, which is overseas is what the Aussies call it. Abroad is, tell me who, 3861. Um, abroad is you guys in the UK, um, say, me, <laughs> our Aussies, it's overseas because we go anywhere out of Australia, it's overseas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm just... I know I'm not going to put those two in one. There we go. What am I going to do? Repositionable labels. 43 and 3860 are all in one. This is the one I'm going to have to work at. Work at. Um, so, yeah, I got the travel bug and did this. You know, like I did a couple of trips, one without Nathan, one with Nathan, and then I did another one without Nathan. But with Egypt, that was, um, I turned around ages before I did the trip. I came and said to Nathan, oh, I'd like to go to Egypt. And he's like, if you want to go to Egypt, I'm not coming with you. That's almost a lie. If you go, I'm not, yes, well, basically it was, if you go, I'm not coming with you. It's simple. Simple as that. Um, which... I enjoy travelling alone. <laughs> so why the question is why would I enjoy travelling alone? It's because I meet people. And it's because when I travel I travel alone, I am a hundred percent responsible for my budget, for what I see, what I do. I don't have any discussions with somebody else going I want to do this and the other person going I want to do this so there is that discussion is completely out the window and then budgeting wise I put the money aside you know kind of <laughs> kind of uh, but basically I don't have I don't budget when I travel by myself um, Nathan made me budget for South Africa and then I still didn't budget because I ignored him in parts of it. Well, I paid for it before we went over so we didn't spend it while we were on holiday, so that makes sense. Back to Egypt though. So yeah, I turned around and said to him, you know, I want to go to Egypt next and he goes, I've been to Cairo, I don't want to go back there. Okay, no worries, you want to be like that, be like that. Fine. But he didn't think I was saying it seriously. And then at work we got faced with redundancy, which is always um, a harsh thing to face. Three seven seven two. And with being made redundant, I my my job was I, I was payroll, so I calculated redundancies. I didn't calculate my own. But when I was given my redundancy package, I was able to go, I know exactly what you're giving me. Uh, I know what I'm entitled to, so if this figure doesn't match mine, you're going to have to redo the calculations. Um, yeah, it was quite a fun, fun process to go through. But, you know, with what I was going to get earned, what I was going to get paid as a redundancy, it was going to be, my payout was going to equate to, what did I work out? It was equated to about nine months. I could afford to be out of work for nine months without actually having to go to work or you know, worry about getting the job. Three, seven, five, six. So um, turned around, went right here. When this payment comes through, when I'm made redundant, I'll go over, I'll go to Egypt, I'll do that. So I started researching the trip. It took 18 months before we found out when we were being made redundant. And then, yeah, because we knew we were being made redundant, but we didn't know the dates. 
So at the time, I was actually very fortunate. I was handed, uh, this is what you'll get, you'll finish up in six weeks, ra di ra di ra And in that six weeks, I found a job within the company and stayed within the company. So I put my Egypt holiday on hold. So the Egypt holiday went on hold, it just went on the back burner because like, well, I still want to go, but I'm going to do it when I can afford it. I'm actually going to have to work out how to pay with it other than the, <laughs> it was a redundancy package. Uh, so yeah, a um, couple of years, took me a couple of years. But what I ended up doing was I got permanency within the company again, got to stay, um, ended up in the IPRO, IROC floor. So that's the Integrated Remote Operating Centre. Is anybody still hanging on here to find out about the 1,000 subscriber giveaway details? <laughs> it's going to be dropped in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, I ended up on the I Rock 4 uh, as a delay accountant and then applied for the job I am doing now. And the position, I didn't get the job. They, they only hire, they only take in, there's an intake of only four to six at a time. In most cases, they train four to six at a time. It takes about three to six months before they take on the next lot of trainees. Um, so I didn't get it, but I was told that you know, I could apply for it the next time it came along. No issue. So I, my current boss, I turned around and said, well, if that happens, there's, I've got three to six months before the next round goes, so I'm going to book my holiday. I'm going to go over to Egypt. And he, they, they approved my leave. So they approved my leave. So I got it all booked, um, put my money down for it, and yeah, I found out they, they decided to do another school train control school quicker than the first one um, because they were extremely short staff and then I got told that well we actually do we are going to give you the job you'll just go in the second train control school and I went well you approved my leave okay I'm just going to pop these out so I can just 3604 4293 Nine, nine, three, four. Okay. Um, you've approved my leave. I can't cancel my leave. Everything is paid for. And it's like, yeah, well, that's how I'm doing. So you'll still go to do the train control school. Um, the school will just have to stop for two weeks while you're away. How's that for a uh, pretty good benefit of um, being needed for a role? So, yeah, they turned around, um, got me on the school, and, but I still went on my holiday, which is pretty good, pretty good. Um, but even right throughout the process of organising this holiday, Nathan was like, no, nah, I'm not going, don't want to go. So I booked it, booked the flight, booked the trip, um, and I booked it in the style that I want to go. To. He, if he wanted, if he actually did come to me, it would have been a much, it would have been on tight budget. I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Well, I probably would have enjoyed it less. Well, I probably would have enjoyed it because Nathan was with me. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so we, uh, oh yeah, so I booked the trip. Uh, five star. Five star deluxe. It didn't cut through either. <laughs> so he did Cairo. When he went to Cairo, he did it as a. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this under there. He did it as a backpacker. So he's how he saw Cairo was totally different to how I was going to see Cairo. Uh, but I wasn't going to let him know that. <laughs> Let's just say he was very surprised with the accommodation that I had. Um, so, yeah, um, booked it. I went five-star deluxe. I had 
saved the money for it, uh, and you know, because it was something I wanted to do, wasn't able to do it, and so yeah, I started my new role, and then two weeks into my new role, I went on holidays, and everybody else in the train control school had to find something else to do. Oh well, they had to find something else for them to do, which well they managed to do. So you know, didn't hinder anything. And there's Bo joining me again. So the trip was actually, the initial trip was 15 days. I had it changed. I had an extra day added to it. Am I not talking to you? Hang on, Bo's just come in. Bo, are you going to sit? Are you going to be good? Hey, 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 buddy. Sorry for the interruption, guys. I've got a penny. He's coming to the car. Good boy. Um, he'll sit in half shortly. <laughs> He's having a look for me. Um, so, yeah, I did the trip. It was a, a really well organised tour. Um, it's not like you would. Not a tour that you would normally, I didn't cut through these properly. It's not a, a stand, well, it was a standard tour. I'd say a lot of tour groups were offering this tour because I saw the same bus everywhere I went. But this was a, a tour where you, you book the trip, you book the tour, and what they do is they cater for you. So, so well, no, they cater for how many are going. If I'd gone as a group of 10, I would have gotten exactly the same tour. I would have gotten exactly the same tour guide. But, um, and, and it would have cost me exactly the same, with the exception of a single supplement, which you pay for your rooms. Um, so they don't make a lot of money on a solo passenger. But I had a personalised, I had a tour where it was just me. I was in a 12-seater, but I went, most of the time it was in a 12-seater tourist bus, which is pretty cool, all to myself. I had my guide all to myself. I didn't share a guide with anybody. Um, I was so looked after. It was absolutely wonderful, and it was a wonderful experience to be able to do that. Okay. That's my first lot of bin. There it goes. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Which is that one and that one. I'm going to try to organise these. I do. I know that I can pull them out of the bag in order, but I just, that's what I haven't done is do that one yet. That's clever. 931, 969, 840. That's 840. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it was a, yeah, a, a, when you get to book a tour, so if you were looking at booking a tour, okay, um, the tour, most of the tour companies will do a big bus at like 30 to 40 people, you know, they'll fill a big bus. This company, they generally took tour groups at about up to 12, so they catered for smaller groups and I got catered for as a you know, one-on-one -on -one basis. It was absolutely wonderful. Okay, so I need this. And remove this one. So my first my trip to Egypt was it was quite good. 
Um, I have, well, I had, I don't have it now. There's no point in having it right now. I had um, Qantas Club lounge access. So what that meant was I could travel in the club lounges. I could stop in the club lounges that were affiliated with Qantas. I flew Emirates and they were affiliated. So I got the club lounge. Hang on, I've got to cut these. So I got the club lounge entry. So I got the, when I go through airports, so I wasn't sitting on the standard seats. I didn't have to buy food while I was there. It was all catered and self-served. It's a great way to travel. It's worth paying the extra to do that. Um, so, yeah. When I got picked up, oops, come on, that didn't cut through. When I got picked up, it was uh, an interesting little drive. So, um, with part of that trip, uh, I give, you get guides, your personal guides. So your personal guides are, um, depending on where it is, most of the time it is what they call Egyptologists. So in where there is monuments, especially with the pyramids, the, you know, there's Egyptologists that give, that are so passionate and full of information um, that you know sometimes it's like they give you so much it's so, so hard to retain and. Uh, going back and looking at the tour, if I did this tour, if I was to recommend the tour to anybody, I would re recommend they did it backwards. So what I mean by backwards is in reverse, <laughs> probably the best way to put it. So in the reverse steps that I did it in, because the I got so much information when my first full day that I was overloaded and I didn't absorb half of it. And then my second day I got even more information and I didn't absorb it. So that then when I went and looked at these monuments um, later on, um, it was, for me, it was all getting all jumbled up. I'm just, I'll explain what I'm doing. I'm going to actually put this full of labels. I know these are only going to take one container. Um, but yeah, I know, yeah, I got, when I was actually seeing the monuments, I wasn't really fully understanding what I was seeing. But, so when I went to Luxor and the Valley of the Kings, some of it I understood the Valley of Kings because we all know about Tutankhamun and all of that. But, there's the additional stories and you know I had one of my guides saying oh you know you would have heard about this and it's like oh yeah and so he didn't tell me more um, if he'd actually told me more and then I went to the museums afterwards I would have actually had probably more questions when looking at the when looking at what was oh, this is where you have to be careful See what I just did? I missed one. Just had that funny feeling. Repositionable labels. I will just go and check that. 28842. <laughs> that would have been dangerous. Serves me right though, because I'm doing these differently to what I normally do. Um, yeah. So, you know, like going and looking at, actually looking at the actual monuments and then back, going back and looking at the museum of what was taken from the mon monuments and put into the museum for people to see. I would have preferred to have done it that way. Uh, mind, when you book the tour, they give you all this information of like, you might find it handy if you read this, this and this, and it's like, nah, I'll just, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to hold on this. They can tell me all about it when I'm there. But anyway, let's keep going. So I had this wonderful Egyptologist, Maggie, and he was absolutely brilliant. 
So when I met him, the poor guy, I feel so sorry for him because I had to ask him to pronounce it quite a few times. Then I had to ask him to spell it because the way he was saying it didn't sound very polite to me. Um, because it came out, the way he said it so fast, it sounded like maggot, which, you know, with a T or a double T on the end of it. You know, so I was like, oh, I don't think that's really your name. I need to make sure I get it right. But it was maggot, M-A-G-E-D, maggot. And, oh, my goodness, he was so, so passionate about Egypt. It, it was so... I don't know how to put it, but I got to a point with what he was saying was just full on overload. His passion was incredible, but I was getting information overload from him. I thought we actually do that forty thing. Um, he was the same age as me. Yeah, you know, he'd done. Um, he'd been an Egyptologist for. Uh, I don't know, 20, less, less than 20 years. Hello, Bo, go away. Go on, back to the couch. Um, yeah, he'd been an Egyptologist for about 20 years, so half his life he'd been an Egyptologist. So he, he knew his stuff, but he looked younger than me. Um, but, yeah, he was... Absolutely brilliant. So with him, I absorbed half about of what he talked, let me know, talked about. Only half, which is, you know, I wish I actually absorbed more. But you just, yeah. It's just so harsh to, to think, actually, that was what I did last time. What I did was this, 838-823-819. How many bags? Two bags of 800. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm actually going to fill two of those with that one. Um, yeah, so he was he was really good. Um, so out of all my tour guides, he is the one that made the difference in the tour. He's the one that I, if I had have had him in the in say Luxor, oh my goodness. I would have absorbed so much more. I wouldn't have gone, this is too much information. I want to do two for the 800s. Two, three. Um, 800 is 22. Silence while I'm concentrating. Uh, 21, 7, 9, 9. Yep. So, yeah, it was a pretty good trip. Uh, it was, I was, <laughs> so this picture here that you see up here. Um, was done after I got, got married to negotiate for me because I've gone and I'm like, I'd like, oh, I like that, I like that. And I went to pay the guy and he went, no, 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 don't buy here. So I, I took his word for it and went, okay, I don't want to buy from there. wonder why, you know, was, was there an issue with the seller or this, that and the other. And he turned around, when we walked away from there, he turned around and he goes, that's not how you buy in Egypt. You must negotiate. 
<laughs> I found out that if you don't negotiate in Egypt, it's actually, some of them find it, um, is it as an insult type of thing? Although I know a lot of people don't negotiate anyway, but um, it can be classed as an insult. So, you know, you, so if, you know, it's a bonus if you say, I'm going to pay this and they agree, right? But if they say one price and you don't want to pay it, they like the opportunity to come to a better agreement. That's probably the best way to put that. So they like the opportunity to come to a better agreement with you. So they do send, end up selling it because they'd rather sell it than it sit on their, their shelves or on their tables. You know, that, that's how they make their income. There's so much markup on what they've got there for the tourists that, you know, to sell it at the price of asking for is a bonus, but um, to not sell it at all, um, it, it makes, you know, it's hard on them. So I turned around and said, look, I can't bargain, I can't barter, never have been able to. And he goes, it's okay, well, that's what you want. We go up to the next door and I'll, 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 I'll help you out. And I went, okay. So then we went to the next door, exactly the same coffee cup. Exact same coffee cup, right? Same price, being offered the same price on the tag as it was this, the other store. And I've turned around and I've actually turned around and said how much. I haven't gone for what prices and I've gone how much. And he's actually offered me, given me a price less than what was on the sticker. And I've looked at it and the bag has gone, nah, nah, don't offer, no, don't, that's too much, too much. <laughs> so Megan basically was seven seven nine okay this is the seven seven five one two three four I have to do two thinking hard here what I've got is one just got to redo a calculation. 14, 21, 28, 19 colours to go. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I only need 20 more. I'm going to work backwards and then forwards. You, you get what I mean in a sec. Um, so, yeah, we'll turn around and he bargained for me. And I got a really good deal. Got a really good deal for these coffee cups. Nice coffee cups. Um, I still to this day use them for my own coffee at home. In the morning I have two coffee, there's two coffee cups. And I use one or the other. I very rarely use any of my other coffee cups unless I haven't started the dishwasher. <laughs> or I haven't, I've been too slack to unstack the dishwasher, whatever. Okay, so. There we go. Um, what I'm going to do here is. What you saw me do with the 800, put the 800 at the bottom. I'm going to put the symbol at the top. Uh, don't put them on the same tray. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that one there. I'm not going to number any more of those, but I am going to do two. So this is where I now need to actually make sure I have a container for each. Two of these containers. Um, yeah, so he negotiated for me um, for, for my for my coffee cups. So every now and then, you know, I have a morning coffee and I'll think of think of my tour guide in Cairo. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm stopping there.
at those labels and that colour. Okay, so I'm going to pop that aside and I'm going to the other end because I need to do my calculation on uh, fitting drills. And my eyes, I can I struggle to see that. There we go. That's what I got it. Um, so yeah, my, my Cairo trip was an interesting interesting trip. That's where I put it. I um, some of the people that I dealt with were wonderful people all the way around. And what I mean by that is not to go with books, but to go with um, and for me, for for me, it's like well, without putting it rude, it was hygiene. Um, there was two, two, two of my guides that I was I, I were, was really were good. I had basically three guides. I had a couple of company representatives. Um, but Maggot was the better one. But on my when I arrived in Cairo, you get picked up by the company representative. He takes you through customs and all of that to get you in. Uh, with Egypt, you cannot get your visa anywhere. For 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 my for for what I was aware. I couldn't get my visa in Australia. I had to actually be in Egypt to get my visa. So, um, the my the company representative on my when I was picked up was very abrupt, and you know, um, you know, you read your paperwork, going, yeah, this is what you need to do when you first arrive. You need to have US dollars to pay for. Have I already cut those? Jeez, talking without realising I've cut them. Um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> let's start with the top. The mm, how do I put it? Yeah, he, my first, my, my, the company representative was just very abrupt and to me it seemed very rude. <laughs> hmm. Two is one, six, two, which is my next one of big ones. Okay. This is where I go and work out how much, how many more containers I need. When do I, Because I have so many one six twos. <laughs> it's all one colour there. Um, yeah, so when I was picked up from the airport, well, this, this company representative, you know, had his sign, said hello, and he went, follow. So I followed him, and he went, give me 25 US dollars. And I'm like, is this right? Is you know my first reaction was, oh my god, I've got a guide here that's just going to demand money from me. Um, and then it was, he took me up to where we were going, and then it dawned on me that it was for the visa. Yeah, um, I felt a little bit silly, but it was also like. You don't expect somebody to actually say give me money <laughs> without them going, you need to pay your visa here. Mm. Oh, I don't need as many, I don't think I need as many containers for this one. Oh, that's going to take four bags. Oh, cool. So, yeah, um, that was quite confronting with him. Um, 
I had another, my other great one was Miss Susie. She was Alexandria. So I had Megan for Cairo, Miss Susie for Alexandria, and then I had Radwan for Luxor, my, the cruise, and um, well, basically, and, and well, the, on the cruise anyway. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's put these. And now I need to work out how many containers I need left over. I think I've got another one that's big. So, I need one. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, five, six, nine, three, one, seven, three, one, eight. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That leaves me one, two, three, four, five containers. I only need two for that. And uh, one, two, one, three. Beautiful. I think I've got this to work. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is back to working backwards because that's 775. Those labels. There we go. 18, I will be able to get on two in three. Four. I'll do four. Four. Seven, seven, five isn't four. Um, yeah, so uh, it was quite an interesting trip. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to continue the package on. to get everything in there's no baggies left over which is fantastic uh, I ended up using one two three four five for one six two four for seven seven five two for six forty 
two for 860 oh, and two for 800. So managed to get 45 colours in here. So a 60 by 80 drills fit 100% into the uh, craft baits, lockles. Well, the way it came to me anyway. Probably wouldn't have done it if it was only more than five colours, but who knows? 45 colours, but who knows? I'm just going to... So, one of the things I do, yet again, I'm showing this. Show it every time because it is so good. I used to use a tissue box. I just went and got this from the craft store. I used to find it popped up. So, one of the things that I do with this is actually the corner. I have blue tack on the corner that actually helps hold it down. But you know how you do a, you you, book, you when if that was came out really well. When you actually kit up, you have all these plastic bags and they take up so much room. This is how I do my plastic bag. Shut. It's a bag with the band and it's band. Okay, so that'll go in the bin like that and use up a lot, lot, lot less space. Um, the loose drills, the drills you're seeing is just because I didn't empty bags properly and because there's drills in the bottom of this. I, I did, I've started doing something with it, but there's the blue tack in the corner. And that just helps that stay shut when it starts to expand and fill up. Anyway, that's that one. So, 1,000 subscriber giveaway. This is one of the images you get to choose from. I'm going to slide this down so you can see it. Get that off. I'll pack these away. Make sure that they are shut. We're all kitted up. We're good to go. When I'm ready to work on it, uh, I'll be able to. Uh, a few others I need to complete first, but yet again, because I work with big ones, I tend to rotate working on. So when you see me do short whip and chats, you don't always see me working on the same diamond painting. Okay, so that's there. Where did I put my weapon there? Diamonds Legends, so what I do with them is I actually slide the top bit under and that goes in there and that way I have the legend when I'm doing my diamond painting and I don't lose it. Okay, so let's get it up, pop that there. My drills that are spilt. Don't need to go put in that tray. There. So I, with the way the colours are on this one, I don't expect to see it properly. You can kind of see the camel, but he's not that good to see. I will say though, when he is for the confetti that I can see there, he's going to come out lovely. Um, but it's just more that because the drills, because the dark ones have white, so this is, that one, I'd say we've got a lot of 939s coming through here, um, but because they're so dark, you have the white coming through that doesn't make it look that attractive. But you can see him, just his head. I can, you can see his body quite easily, even his legs here. And the good old Pyramids of Giza. And all of that lovely, lovely, lovely blue sky. <laughs> okay, so 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm going to pause this here. Did you notice the pause? I can see his pause just. 
Um, so the thousand subscriber giveaway gives a choice of one of the four diamond paintings. So these are all customs, all available in Diamond Shop. Uh, three of them are listed under Fiona's Cats, the other is listed under Egypt. Um, but so the choice is so this is the Lion Cup, this one's completed. And that sparkle, I actually don't have any lights on inside. That is just lights from coming outside and it's winter out there. But so. So that's the lion cub. This is your choice. The lion cub, cheetah, and he's come up beautiful. You have the leopard, which is the one that I am working on right now. Look at those eyes. You can actually see here, see how here this is all dark, but you've got like what it is, is the white print. Um, which, but yeah, come up. He's coming up beautifully. You can really see the detail of the blood, the branches up here. Okay, well, he that's a she. She had cubs in the area, they were the cubs were a year old, but they were, she had cubs in the area. And then the Cairo, and this one um, has a lot of sky to it, it needs that sky. As a, a ratio to of a, of a really good ratio of the image. So there's your choice of four diamond paintings. They will all be round. So question is, somewhere in this video, I talked about tour guides on my on this tour, and uh, I said his name, and I struggled with how to pronounce it. I asked him to spell it and I think I gave the spelling or I should have given the spelling in this video. So two things I want from you in this in this giveaway. Pop your comments down below. So the two questions are what was his name and spell it out properly and which diamond painting you would choose as a custom. Uh, what I will do is I do have the date, hang on. So I will give uh, one and a half weeks for the competition to go on. I will do a live on Friday the 14th of August. So 14th of August, Friday morning. Friday morning for me. It'll be Thursday night for the US, okay. Um, will be the drawing for the give thousand subscriber giveaway. I'll do it live. Um, I yeah, I, I just I do believe that drawings when you use YouTube drawings they have to be done live. Um, but another thing that I would like not to be included is I would like to win the custom. What I would like you to say is the, my guy's name. And either <clears throat> Egypt, Lion Cub, Cheetah, Leopard. And um, don't say I would like to win. The reason behind this is because I don't want this to be, um, people, there is people that are out there that look on YouTube for things that say competition. And they will go and only look for you, look for videos that have competition. So I don't want this to reflect anything called um, competition I just would like to see you know, in your comments just say maggot and blah blah for your custom and um, that gives the true gems here that watch my channel that are aware that it was coming up it gives you the ability to be um, recognized for um, recognized for being a gem I suppose is the best way to put it um, and on that note, I will say, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Who knows what I'll do for a thousand, 2,000 subscriber giveaway. My 500 giveaway, I actually did give away five, uh, I, my 500 giveaway, I did give away three diamond paintings, three custom images, basically those three. Um, this is just a, this is just a choice of, of um, because I did that drawing slightly differently and as per usual I am waffling on. So guys, 
comment below with your with um, the answers and uh, hit the thumbs up button for me and uh, if you're not already subscribed and one of my gems why not <laughs> go and hit the subscribe button and then that thumbs up so that then you add the um, bell so then you know um, when I do an upload or I go live you're a notified. And on that note I will say bye for now.